Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Between aging and busy lifestyles, many women struggle with maintaining their physical and mental wellness. At Aquavita Concierge Healthcare Services for Women, we can help you revitalize your health and reclaim your life. We start from within by balancing your hormones, allowing your body to achieve and maintain desired weight goals. We also specialize in peptide therapies, regenerative medicine, sexual health, and aesthetics in our state-of-the-art facilities. Feel better, look better, live better at Aquavita. Visit aquavitality.com and begin your journey today. You did, eh? And why did you do that? Oh, just so you could resist opening it before Christmas. <laughs> well, that took a lot of nerve. Oh, no, it just took a lot of swing. Yes. <laughs> Believe me, before I was through, I bitterly regretted starting the whole proposition. Uh, Willie, I was a wreck. Yes, Mr. Llewellyn worked quite hard. Llewellyn, the next time you poke your probing proboscis into my personal affairs, I'm going to take a swing at it. What was that, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> If you fool around with something that's no skin off your nose, why, by George, it will be. Oh, please, Mr. Gildersleeve, don't lose your temper. Uh, who's losing their temper? But you're raising your voice. Who's raising their voice? You. You're just angry because I hid your present. Oh, is that so? I suppose you know everything that's going on in my mind. Uh, yep. I can read you like a dictionary. Yes. If you can read me like a dictionary, why don't you turn to the letter D and under discharged? You'll find that's where you are. Why, Mr. Gildersweave, what do you mean? I mean that you're fired, dismissed, finished, sacked. Now, do you understand? Well, all right. That's the way you feel. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Marjorie. Goodbye. Goodbye, wee boy. Goodbye, Mr. Llewellyn. What's he getting so huffy about? I never saw such an excitable fellow in all my life. But the man has got no Christmas spirit. Making me fire him right before the holidays. Hey, he didn't get us paid, did he, Uncle Moore? By Joe, that's right. You better run after him, Leroy, and tell him to come back for his money. Okay, Uncle Moore. Uh, and Leroy. Yes, Uncle? Uh, tell him if he uh, behaves himself, he can come back to work. Sure. Uh, he had no right getting me all worked up after a hard day shopping. I'm not an unreasonable man, am I, Marjorie? Of course not, Uncle Moore. Yeah, I'm just as nice as the next man. Sometimes nicer, too. I couldn't see him anywhere, Uncle Moore. You mean he's gone? Well, it was snowing rather hard. Oh, jumping jeeps. I've turned him out into the cold with only a thin Macintosh. Oh, now don't you worry, Uncle Mort. Just call him at his hotel tomorrow after you've both cooled off. Yes, of course. Oh, I can't do that. I don't know where he lives. Uh, do either of you? No, I don't think so. Not me. Oh, my goodness. I'm a cad. I'm a bounder. No, not a bounder, just a cad. <laughs> I won't be able to look myself in the face the next time I shave. What'll I do? Say, maybe Bertie knows where he lives. Oh, yes, Bertie. Maybe she does. I'll go find out. Uh, Bertie? Yes, sir? Do you know where... Llewellyn, what are you doing here? Oh, just eating my supper, Mr. Gildersweave. Oh! Down? Hey, uh, going down? Hey, wait a minute! Uh, no use, Leroy. They're booking passage on those elevators a couple of days in advance. Uh, let's wander into the furniture department. Well, we've looked every place else for a present. Maybe we'll find something there. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about Fibber McGee's present, Marjorie. I only wanted to rest. My feet ache clear up to my shoulder blades. Oh. Poor Uncle Mort. Yeah. Look, here's a nice big leather chair. Huh? Try it, why don't you? Oh, thank you. I will. Uh, very comfortable. Now, if I could only take my shoes off, but there I go, daydreaming again. Hey, look at the buttons on the arm of this chair. Huh? I wonder what this one does. Ooh, 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 ooh. Help me, the chair is now a bed. Oh, Leroy, now look what you've done. See, the back goes down and the bottom comes up. Here, I'll give you a hand, Uncle. You know, on second thought, this is so nice, I think I'll take 40 winks. <laughs> Wake me up in 1942, will you? Uncle, you can't sleep there. Oh, yes, I can. Watch me. Say, hey, this is certainly a great invention. Now, I wonder what this button does. Oh, 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 you spoiled everything. It's a chair again. How do, folks? Interested in the Snorwell reclining chair? Oh, is that what it is? Well, 
Mighty cozy little one-man couch. And an ideal Christmas present for father, husband, friend, or boss. Uncle McGee, how about it? Yes, Uncle McGee, how about it? Yes. <laughs> See, that's not a bad idea. In fact, it's the best one I've had so far. Let me tell you about some of the Snorwell features. Oh. Three comfy, cuddly positions. Yes? Yeah. Sitting, snoozing, and sleeping. Made of the toughest bull leather. Overstuffed, underslung. Why, you couldn't be more tickled if you bought a feather bed. Huh? Buy one for the rest of your life. Catch up? Yes. Oh, brother. Now, there's a salesman. What do you think, Uncle Moore? Well, how much is it? Thirty-nine ninety-five. That's without any of the accessories and attachments, of course. Oh, yeah. You mean it's got attachments like a vacuum cleaner? Yes, sir. The Snorwell is a first fully mechanized chair. Well, I'm interested now. This is for a friend of mine who is rather mechanically minded. Yes? Yes, he invented an illuminated sundial once. Yeah, for cloudy days, you know. <laughs> huh? No, you wouldn't know. <laughs> Let me show you these features. Uh, Here's the overhead reading lamp, yes. also dandy for shaving. Yes. Then we have a combination ashtray and cigar lighter that appears and disappears at the touch of a button. Uh, what does it do with the ashes? Dump them under the rug? Uh, uh, we also have an electric clock and a compartment for sandwiches with a tank for ice water. Yes. Gee, it does everything but sing you to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> It'll do that, too. What? For $24 more, we'll put a little radio inside the headrest. My goodness, if you tack a mailbox on the side of this chair, you could live in it. No, oh, this one seems a little damaged. Look at this crack in it. Crack? Yeah. That is no crack. What? It's a slot for old razor plate. Yes. <laughs> Do you know, Uncle, the more I hear about it, the more I'm convinced that this is just the present for Mr. McGee. So am I. A young man, how much did one cost with all the accessories? Well, the Super Deluxe Shoot the Works model sells for $119.95. Oh, my dear. But what do you think, children? Oh, yes, take it. What do you got to lose? $119.95. <laughs> well, I guess I'll do it just the same. Gee, I knew I'd sell one of these someday. What? Uh, <laughs> uh, where is it to be delivered, sir? It goes to Pippa McGee, 79 Whistle Vista, Whistle Vista. Yeah. Can you have it delivered there before Christmas? Yes, sir. We can send it out by express this afternoon. Yeah, good. Uh, charge it to Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Uh, here's my card. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve, and season's greetings. Yeah. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, come on, you two. We can go home now. It certainly is a load off my... Well, hello, Judge Hooker. Uh, Christmas shopping, I see. Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. How are you, Marjorie? Just fine, Judge Hooker. Season's greetings, Judge. Thank you. You all look so happy, there can only be one reason. Yeah? You've just finished buying the last of your holiday gifts. Yes, that's it. And it certainly was a humdinger. Yes, sir, it was for... Uh, Leroy, let's keep it a secret. It was for a certain very good friend of mine, Judge. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's a real pal, you know. <laughs> well, we'll be seeing you. Come on, children. Let's make another try for the elevator. Uh -huh. Say, could that present be for me? After all, I have been a pal to him. I'd just like to know. <clears throat> Young man. Yes, sir? What, uh, I was, uh, my friend who was just here, he mm. told me what he bought, but it slipped my mind. What was it again? Oh, it was a present. A Snorwell reclining chair with $80 worth of accessories. Well, well, that must be for me. Gildersleeve broke the springs in my best lounge chair, and now he's making up for it. Say, now I'll have to get him something better than that flashlight I bought him for Christmas. <laughs> Thank you, young man. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Gee whiz. So that's Pippa McGee. <laughs> <laughs> going on in this house? Mm -mm. Sounds like somebody's raising a rumpus in the rumpus room. I'm going to investigate. Mm. I don't know why I'm so brave. In fact, I don't know if I'm so brave. I better stop here in the kitchen first. <laughs> now I feel better. Peculiar how much confidence a couple of carving knives gives a lady. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. I got you surrounded. I mean, I got you covered. Uh, Bernie, 
What are you doing here at this time of the night? Oh, Mr. Gilsleeve. Oh, my goodness. I thought it was a burglar. Yep. Oh, my stars in the firmament. That was a burglar. Huh? What's that all chopped up, Mr. Gilsleeve? Oh, chopped up? Oh, well, that's uh, the present Mr. McGee sent me. Uh... Oh, then that means there wasn't no burglar no how. Huh? Honest or truly, Mr. Gilsleeve, you ought to be ashamed of yourself what? scaring folks at 3 a.m. in the morning and sneaking around in your pajamas, uh. snooping at your Christmas presents ahead of time. Lucky I caught you before you got it open. Now, you go on back to bed. Yeah, but Bertie. Go on, now, get. You understand what that is? No. You what? know what you is? No, what? You is a problem, Uncle. That's what. Is Good it? night. <laughs> oh. Judge Hooker, yes. Come right in, Judge. I'm still a few days early, but I couldn't wait. Uh, Merry Christmas, Gildersleeve. Well, well, and what's this? Oh, just a little present I picked out for you, Gildy old pal. Uh, for me? Oh, <laughs> well, what is it, Judge? A set of matched golf clubs in the leather bag. Oh, Judge, you shouldn't have done it. By the way, I've got something for you. Oh, no. Well, I didn't expect anything. Well, it isn't very much. Oh, I'll bet it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had it right here in the hall. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Here it is. Yes. This little box. Huh? Uh. This little box? Huh? Oh. Yes. Oh, thank you very much, Gilda. Oh, won't you come in and look at our tree, Judge? No. No, I've got to be getting along now. I uh. feel... Uh, a headache coming on. Oh. <laughs> goodbye. Uh, goodbye, and thanks for the wonderful present, old pal. Welcome. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Marjorie, look at the dandy golf outfit Judge Hooker gave me for Christmas. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. Yeah. What did you give him, Uncle Moore? The pants presser I almost sent to McGee. <laughs> hey, will you two come into the rumpus room? Oh, sure. Come on, Marjorie. Uh, what is it, Leroy? Look at this. Somebody tried to get into the box filled with McGee's and Uncle Moore. Oh, why, yes. Uh, Chips and splinters all around and holes in the box. Uh, why, who could have done it, Uncle? Uh, a mice. Uh, <laughs> hey, we better take a look inside to see if it's uh, damaged any. But it's still four days till Christmas, Uncle. Well, but who knows what's happened to it. We better act quickly. Uh, let me have that hatchet. Uh, thank you. Uh, of course, you know, I'd never open it under ordinary circumstances. <laughs> yeah. Ah, there. Yeah, put the lid someplace, Leroy. Yeah. Well, everything's all right so far. Uh, at last. I'm so excited I can hardly tear off the wrappings. <laughs> now, now we can see what we can see. What's this? Oh, a card. Uh, Dear Chum Gildy. Oh, good old Fibber. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And here's your old lawnmower back. Signed, Fibber McGee. Oh! The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. You know, people who won't try new things certainly miss a lot. Yes, you just can't know whether you really like something or not until you actually try it yourself. That's why I urge everyone to try delicious parquet margarine made by Kraft. Because you're really missing something if you haven't tried this truly modern margarine. First of all, you're missing the delicate appetizing flavor that makes parquet margarine outstanding. Why, Americans from coast to coast have found they prefer parquet margarine because it tastes so good, both for table use and for cooking, too. Secondly, parquet margarine is an economical source of food values your family needs. Now, that's very important these days. Proper nutrition is essential to national defense. You see, parquet margarine is wholesome and nutritious. It's one of the best energy foods you could serve. And especially important in the wintertime, Kraft adds 9,000 units of vitamin A to every pound of parquet, making it a dependable source of this vitamin the year round. Now, with food prices rising, you owe it to yourself to find out how delicious and nourishing economical parquet margarine is. So don't put it off. Ask your food dealer tomorrow for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Uh, well, hand me those pajamas, Leroy. Here you are. Yeah, thanks. And to think that now that extra shirt, Marjorie. It's in the bag already, Uncle. Oh, well, I'll show him a thing or two. Excuse me, Uncle Moore, but 
Where are you going? To Whistle Vista, my dear. I'm going to try and get back my $119 chair before it's delivered to Pepper McGee's house. You aren't going to be away over Christmas, are you? Oh, no. I'm just going to be there Tuesday night. And remind me on the way to the station. I've got to stop at the cut-rate drugstore. What for? To get McGee another pants presser. Merry Christmas, everybody, and good night. <laughs> heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randall. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. Chumba. That's right, ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumba. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary, full work limited by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered ChumbaCasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.